One topic of conversation this year at Paris Air Show will be how the airspace is continuing to evolve. I'm here with Dave Weisgrass, the president of Intelligence Information and Services Business at Raytheon, who's going to talk to us a little bit about how the airspace looks and the future developments within that airspace. So, Dave, give us that overview. All right, thank you, Beth. So, first of all, uh, something about uh, the airspace in general and Raytheon Company. We have been involved in air traffic management, the airspace, for over 50 years. And even today, Raytheon touches about 60% of all the air traffic that takes place daily around the globe. So it really is a core competency, and we have a very good understanding of what's in the rearview mirror and what we see going forward. So today, and it's pretty well known, that commercial air traffic is going to grow, I don't want to say exponentially, but grow significantly over the next 5, 10, 20 years. And Raytheon is going to support that with very advanced air traffic management capabilities, and I can talk more about that in just a minute. But in addition to what's going on in the commercial space with respect to air traffic, drones, UASs, whatever terminology people use, uh, today, that market is still, my view, fairly nascent, but that is growing exponentially. And although it's not very crowded today, you can't look up everywhere, if you're even here today at the air show or if you're standing in, a, in the middle of a city somewhere, you don't see a lot of UASs in the sky. You will in the next three, five, or seven years. And that's a very, very much of a complicating factor for air traffic management. So in that future airspace, how does technology such as radar fit into the picture? So I'm glad you asked that question, Beth. So Raytheon has a long history of being the world leader in radar technology. Everything from radars to size of buildings, sky rises in New York City, all the way down to what we today we're calling Skylar. And Skylar is a low power radar that was initially developed for high fidelity weather below 3,000 feet. Today, the radars that are used for weather forecasting and weather surveillance only pick up about 30% of the weather is taking place below 3,000 feet. Also, it's a gap in the airspace. The radars, the spinning radars that you see at airports don't see below 3,000 feet. Our Skylar radar picks up all of that traffic and with respect to the future airspace, it's what we call a gap filler. It's an absolute necessary capability that we're bringing to bear in this new era of, of drone and air traffic management. And in terms of the future airspace, what are some of the key technologies that you'll be showcasing and talking about this week? So a few years ago, we started fielding a, uh, an advanced a terminal automation system that we call STARS. In the United States, at 400 different civil and military airports, uh, we've, we've fielded that capability, and it's the most advanced analytics and automation terminal capability anywhere on the planet. Internationally, we have something similar that we call AutoTrack 2 and AutoTrack 3. So that's, that's the first thing we've been doing from a more traditional commercial aviation air traffic management perspective. We've now taken that capability. We have, we call it a ground-based detect and avoid system. And you can think of it as stars light, where we are now providing drone operators with essentially the same type of information that air traffic controllers have in the tower. And it gives them the ability to importantly to see and to detect when, when they are not supposed to be where they're not supposed to be. It gives them great situational awareness. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for that overview, Dave. And it will be interesting to continue to follow the developments of the future of the airspace going forward.